Thank you, Chris. When the old Soviet Union broke up, many figure skating experts figured that the domination of skating by the new emerging nations, in particular Russia, would come to an end. Well, so far, that has not happened, but as Chris reports, the cracks are indeed beginning to appear. Struggle, a common thread throughout Russian history. Captured by David Lean's epic movie, Dr. Zhivago. The Russian Revolution marked the end of aristocratic indulgences, the beginning of communism. Special privileges remained during Soviet rule for those who brought glory to the state, like the protopopovs of the 60s. Irina Rodnina, winner of 10 world titles with partners Ulanov and Zaitsev. Vestimanova and Bukin, four world crowns and Olympic gold. Succeeded by Klamova and Ponomarenko, Russian royalty on ice. But the collapse of communism marked a changing of the guard in Russian society and its sport. Now even the nation's best skaters have little edge in everyday life. In time of socialism, the system of sport was very, very powerful. And it was a big, big river, gold river, which was going to the sport. We, now we are really free country. We was looking to be a free country. And now we are really free. We are free from the food. We are free from the good roads. We are free from the shoes. We are really free. And we are free from the good condition for skating. Shishkova and Naumov are championship products of the old system, but they train in a radically different environment. We always had a, a great condition for the physical culture to run and swim and everything, but now we have it. And especially now we have the ice in our city. I'm in St. Petersburg, and we have to go into Moscow to train in there. There, in the Moscow, very good condition, but we can uh, stay in the Moscow so many times because it's very uh, expensive for the, our federation to pay for the free, for the uh, apartment, for the food, everything. No money. Everything skaters have has, have to do by themselves. When I'm thinking about condition which we have now, it's not possible to be good. So many coaches have left. Irina Rodnina trains Czech pairs champions Kovarakova and Novotny. Uh, for figure skating, I think it's very difficult time, not only for figure skating, for all sports, it's very difficult because a lot of coaches uh, go working in other countries and uh, um, before we have... Um, so, you know, the best what I become from my coach and coaches who work in the national team, then I begin working. It's all time was like uh, steps up, up, up. Now you, we, uh, I feel like these steps is broken. The Soviet brain drain has taken Rodnina to Lake Arrowhead, California. Ice dance matron Natalia Duvova is in Lake Placid. Few remain. We are going to lead generation of skaters. As a, a young one are noticed to work for their living. Uh, parents can't afford uh, now that the skaters, uh, that their uh, children can uh, skate. And it seems to make some time. Some time, and then we start again. 17-year-old European champion Ilya Kulik is that fresh start. He gives Russian skating a future. We have still schools in Moscow. But we still have um, good figure skating schools, especially in Moscow and also in uh, St. Petersburg, Leningrad. And there are still good skaters skating, practicing. There are still some left, but of course our choice was much bigger before. Russian coaches and skaters and just Russian people are used to difficulties and we are very flexible, we are very adjustable to the conditions we were before and we are now. That's why we don't think, oh, how difficult it is. We think, what to do to be on the podium again? It is that indomitable spirit which will fuel the dawn of a new era in Russian skating.